Hello everyone, and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution 2. Today we're going to do a park tour of one of my um, five-star Jurassic Difficulty Challenge Mode parks. As you can see, we've got all of the skins unlocked now, but I haven't done Jurassic Difficulty on Southwest just yet. Um, but the next one that I wanted to do a overview of is the United Kingdom map. So I, this is probably the easiest way to show the unique challenges for this map. So this is the one where you start with no money. There's a bunch of wild dinosaurs on the island that you can choose to sell for money or keep. It looks like Generally speaking, the scientists that you can hire start off with low skills. Um, I'm pretty sure sabotage risk is high in all of the Jurassic ones. Terrain editing cost is high, which is something I'll talk about later. High risk of storms and you're capped at two staff centers. As you can see, my fastest completion was well under par time, which is always nice. Um, but yeah, let's get into the actual map now that we've seen the challenges. If only every member of the team had your drive and commitment. Alright, I'm pretty sure every time you open the map back up, this screen comes up just to remind you that you completed a uh, challenge mode on five stars, so uh, let this be proof in case some calamity happens during the tour and reduces our park rating. This is also the map where you get the Ornithomimosaurid cosmetic genes. Alright, so for right now, let's just pause, and as you can see, the park is already done. We are already at five stars, so this is like a tour of our completed park. So I kept this initial enclosure, and I just expanded upon it. This is the original hatchery that's um, way over here at the start. The only dinosaur that I kept, or sorry, I kept two of the species. I kept the Nigersaurus and I kept the Coelophysis. Everything else I had to sell for monies. Um, and unfortunately, the original two Nigersaurus died from old age right before I got to five stars, so the ones that are in here are new ones. Um, but otherwise, there it got pretty close financially at the start. Um, I wanted to keep the Baryonyx, but you have to research the Piscivore feeder, and it doesn't let you do that right away. So I had this, and also I had a disease, I think, really early, so I had to prioritize getting the um, Paleo Medical Facility down. And so Baryonyx made a return, but I had to sell the original Baryonyx that you get. So anyway, I once you have the Nigersaurus, and I built a small Coelophysis enclosure over here, you can kind of just stay in this main landing area for your first couple stars until you get settled. I believe my second dinosaur was Ceratosaurus, so I put Ceratosaurus in with the Coelophysis. And as you can see, some, there's a lot of things changed since this game first came out, um, but now, let's see, but Coelophysis counts as a scavenger, and so they can cohabitate with each other without any problems. When the game first came out, they would eat the scavengers, like the compies and stuff, so, but now they can live together without any issues. So that was my second dinosaur. Then I think the third species I added was I made this 
relatively large enclosure, and I believe my next species was either Apatosaurus or Struthiomimus, or sorry, Gallimimus. Um, so one thing that you'll notice that I did is I tried to keep dinosaurs that, or the herbivores anyway, that like the same types of food. So the Apatosaurus likes the tall leaf, but you can, one of the options here, this here, the Tempskaya, or however that's pronounced, you can put both ground leaf and tall leaf at the same time. So that makes them easier to cohabitate with other herbivores that like tall leaf or ground leaf. So, as we can see here, Gallimimus likes ground leaf, and then I believe Nasutoceratops is in here, and they also like ground leaf. So that really helps with fitting more dinosaurs into an enclosure, especially since we have limited space on this map and it costs more money to... Oh no, that was our... Okay, our first Nidrosaurus actually was alive until just now. Okay, we still have two, so they're... I wanted to make sure their social needs were still okay. So that carries over into this enclosure. So remember, we kept the Nigersaurus, and they like ground fiber. So I specifically chose herbivores that also want ground fiber. So that was the Olorotitan, and then Kentrosaurus also likes ground fiber. So that helps with the way that population and fitting dinosaurs in this game is so different than the first Jurassic World evolution that I'm just now, years late, years after release, I've kind of taken more time to figure out, realize and understand at least a little bit how those differences work out. And that was, it's definitely helpful for a map like this where there's not very much space. Um, so basically, by the time this whole area was fleshed out, I believe that got us to around three stars. A uh, reminder that the Innovation Center is kind of like a free 200, not, it's not free, but it's like a 250 appeal bonus. So it's kind of like having an extra dinosaur without an enclosure, I suppose, if you want to think of it that way. Looks like I've got one large hotel, one small hotel, and one of each of the large amenities over here. Um, I also made use of the new viewing options, the log viewing gallery and the uh, the dome viewing gallery, and I believe I have really, really good visibility. Actually, yeah, dinosaur visibility is currently 100%, so I really like these because as cool as the tours are, it gets really annoying when the tours get stopped because dinosaurs are in the pathway or something of the like. And also your visibility depends on the tours constantly being moving around properly. And that doesn't always happen. So I, I really enjoyed having these new viewing options. Um, I suppose the only drawback is if you look at them, they don't have as strong of a rating. So you see they only have one arrow of the um, adventure and nature, whereas like the Jurassic Tour has three adventure arrows. I'm still not completely savvy on how the number of arrows works. I <laughs> I believe it correlates to how many guests of that type go to your amenities, and then you can make more money easel more easily from those guests at your amenities. But I I'm imagining that there has to be some sort of minor drawback to these only having one 
upwards arrow for those two different uh, types of guests. All right. So once that area of the park was built up, I started expanding to this area. And as you can see, we have a giant Carnotaurus and Coelophysis encounter with tons of Carnotaurus in here. We've got lots of them in here. Oh. Looks like we got 10 Carnotaurus in here. Um, something I could have done that might have been a better option is... Is Majungasaurus even unlockable here? What about Albertosaurus? It doesn't look like it. So, let me show you if you're not sure what I'm talking about. If you click on here, you can see that Carnotaurus can cohabitate happily with Majungasaurus and Albertosaurus. Um, so that means you can put them in an enclosure together, and aside from needing to have enough space, they won't have any issues with each other as long as you meet their needs. But it looks like... Um, let me check my map. I may have, They may have been unlocked and I just totally missed it. Right, so no Majungasaurus. Albertosaurus would be over here. Yeah, so unfortunately neither of those would have been an option for this map, but that would have, if that was an option, that, that would have been a good one to utilize, a good combo. But so as you can see, we've got like a crispy 3000 appeal for all these guys here. Um, so there's a ton of dinosaur appeal being generated by all these Carnotaurus, and they're all 100% comfort. The Coelophysis, um, they panic a lot, unfortunately, especially the ones that have the skittish trait, but I haven't had any major problems with them with low health or anything. Um, I added the small Notosaurus enclosure over here, and the large hotel actually pretty much gives us full visibility. This was mainly just to increase our species count and decrease the uh, variety penalty. This got us to four stars, probably even above four stars once I put in more Carnotaurus. I probably could even fit in more, actually, but we need to we would need to adjust the enclosure a little bit. It's a little it's bordering on the small side. But I wanted to get to five stars with a UK dinosaur, so our final dinosaur was Baryonyx. So we've got five of them in here, and I believe they have... It's just big enough for all of them, actually. The, they, it looks like they would like a little more forest coverage. Um, so that got us to five stars. We're a little short of five now because I believe that one Nigrosaurus uh, passed away and we have a couple of Coelophysis with low health. Um, and that's unfortunately just because they panic when the large carnivores get nearby so they don't always um, stay at 100% health. So let me, that was all the dinosaurs that we needed. Um, let me show you how I organized my ranger team. So I kept the, this is the one you start out with because you have to tranquilize and move the wild dinosaurs. One of each large amenity was enough for here and we're pretty well optimized with profits here. Then for the last two sections of the park, I put my ranger and paleo team in this corner so that they can easily get to these two enclosures and they also have a relatively short trip to get to the baryonyx enclosure and i actually even have enough room for another species over here if i needed it but thankfully we haven't really needed that to get the five stars even on jurassic difficulty I did put a attraction down, so that's like another 100 appeal 
Um, I'm kind of curious. To, I wasn't, I was never sure if that stacks with, okay, yeah, entertainment attractions, 450. So that adds to our total appeal number. And as you can see, we're over the target um, appeal despite the variety penalty. Um, so I believe if we just got that one more Nidrosaurus back in, that would generate enough uh, income per minute to get back up to five stars. Our transport rating is at 88% even, and I believe that's, this game is really picky sometimes. I, I want to say that's literally just because there's like a viewing gallery over here. Let's see. Yeah, I think. I think that's it. I think that's the only thing that's um, holding that rating back. Oh. One thing I wanted to mention, just for uh, if you're, I ran into an issue where my ranger teams, the one of the ranger teams I'd be able to assign to exhibits, but the other one would get stuck and say unable to access even though there was nothing really stopping it. And supposedly there's a bug where whichever ranger team is on the right or something gets stuck, um, which is annoying, but I actually never... I didn't run into it because I always used one ranger team to assign all the paddocks, and then I used the other ranger team to be like my, my extra tasks jeep or my storm repair jeep. So thankfully, I haven't had too much of an issue with those. And then up here, I believe, so I put medium amenities down here. It looks like there's only about 150 guests, so I probably could have put small amenities and made a little more profit from these, actually. And that's just because there's only one species up here, the Baryonyx. If I put more dinosaurs up here, they would generate more appeal to this area and uh, the medium amenities would probably make more money. Um, so, overall, this one, aside from at the very beginning when you're trying to get financially stable, I actually thought this was one of the easier challenge modes. If you want something done right, you do it yourself. Or at least delegate it to someone you trust. Let's In take a case, look. That's you. Check out this latest objective. Let's take a look at my scientists. Um, so if we can get oh, the park more talking. Up, that should improve things across the board. Make sure to stay on top of it. So they're not even all fully trained based on all the research I did. This is kind of I'm going to transition into stuff that I learned that I would have maybe done a little differently. Um, so ideally, you want to pay close attention to what their salaries are. This person has the highest salary by far, but I really needed them for the seven logistics skill. Um, a pretty overall pretty well balanced in all three of the areas. I didn't need as many welfare points, so I have a bit more in the genetics and the logistics. Um, Let's look at my research track. Um, generally, you always want to kind of reevaluate your scientists, and if the, if the game gives you a, an expensive, weak scientist to start off with, you can always let them go and look for better scientists. One thing that I did is I, you can see here, I researched a lot of this stuff um, in this infrastructure tree and like this response facility extra vehicle and paleomedical facility extra vehicle. I haven't even used this, so that was kind of a waste of money and resources. This extra scheduling I also haven't used because what's irritating is that it's an upgrade. It doesn't automatically unlock. You have to like, you have to go to your facility and add the upgrade. And in order to get more than one upgrade, you have to research this final thing, which is 22 logistics. And on this map, I had a lot of storms, so I actually preferred to have storm defense on almost all of my buildings. 
see for the hatcher I have advanced equipment so that I get more eggs out of each batch which helps save a lot of time and money and storm defense because um, for whatever reason you don't generate nearly as much money on this island compared to other ones at least I didn't um, so having to fix everything during storms is really costly so anyway my the takeaway there was I don't um, for this infrastructure tree I spent a lot of time and resources researching some of these couple of things and the scientist training might that was probably a good one but these two I didn't need to I ended up not even using those um, one thing that I've been doing a better job of that's been really helpful is keeping up with all of the medicine treatments that unlock as they become available. That helps decrease the number of outbreaks on the island. Generally, you'll just have one really bad one, and then if you're able to research the medicine for it, that's the last time you have to deal with it. For gene modifications, um, I actually, on this map, there's not really any specific gene problems that you need to worry about. On the other map, there's definitely more gene modifications. Uh, sure. There's not as many gene modifications that you need to worry about necessarily on, on the other challenges. There's, like, gene penalties that you kind of need to address. But otherwise, that is my... I'm glad to see you care as much as missions accomplished as you do about the dinosaurs. I mean, they do go hand in hand. Yeah, I'm actually pretty sure that that marketing tour gave us the extra funding to get back to five stars, so that's kind of an interesting way to get that. But yeah, that's my five star Jurassic UK tour. So you get the, I believe it's the Ornithomimid skins for this one. We had room to expand um, there was a couple a couple things I could have done a little more optimally but um, I hope you all enjoyed and found this to be helpful um, I, as you can see I do have videos planned on Jurassic Northwest America that one was probably the most difficult one that I've had so far and then I beat Southwest USA on hard mode I'm not sure if I have the uh, the, the willpower to redo that one on Jurassic, but we will see. And that's you do unlock the skins if you beat it on hard mode. You don't have to beat it on Jurassic, but having that little dinosaur badge on my main menu might give me all the, the satisfaction I need to try that one again. So anyway, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.